the chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. Am I riding in on a shining steed? I would have suggested a griffon, but sadly they're extinct. Joke as you will, posturing is necessary. I didn't ask for this, but someone has to find a way to seal the breach. Spoken nobly indeed. You think I'm mocking you? This age has made people cynical. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time has a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. I've never heard of anyone going so far into the Fade. That's extraordinary. Thank you. It's not a common field of study for obvious reasons. Not so flashy as throwing fire or lightning. The thrill of finding remnants of a thousand-year-old dream? I would not trade it for anything. I will stay then. At least until the breach has been closed. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate mage surrounded by Chantry forces, and unlike you, I do not have a divine mark protecting me. Cassandra has been accommodating, but you understand my caution. You came here to help, Solus. I won't let them use that against you. How would you stop them? However I had to. Thank you. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Cassandra has been accommodating, but you understand my caution. Cassandra trusts you. She won't let anyone put you into a circle against your will. Thank you. I appreciate the thought. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Closing the breach is our primary goal, but I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We can't afford distractions. We must focus on sealing the breach. Yes, as I said, that is our primary goal. It's a moot point regardless. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? I'd like to know more about you, Solus. Why? You're an apostate. Yet you risked your freedom to help the Inquisition. Not the wisest course of action when framed that way. I appreciate the work you're doing, Solus. I just wanted to know more about you. I'm sorry. With so much fear in the air. What would you know of me? I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on elven culture. I thought you'd be more interested in sharing your opinions of elven culture. You are Dalish, are you not?
Yes, I am. The Dalish are the best hope for preserving the culture of our people. Our people? You use that phrase so casually. It should mean more. But the Dalish have forgotten that, among other things. Oh, but you know the truth, right? While they pass on stories, mangling details, I walk the fade. I have seen things they have not. Fine, you think we're terrible. What about the alienages full of elves who aren't Dalish? Why? What would it benefit some poor man in a Ferelden alienage to learn that his ancestors strode the land like gods? It would only make him bitter, or inspire him to take a foolish risk and get himself killed. You've decided his reaction for him. Perhaps I have. If you have questions and believe the answers will help, ask. I'd like to know more about the elves from before our time. The Dalish strive to remember Halam Shiral. But Halam Shiral was merely a fumbling attempt to recreate a forgotten land. Arlathan. Elvanan was the empire. And Arlathan, its greatest city. Place of magic and beauty, lost to time. You've studied ancient elves. What else do you know of Arlathan? We hear stories of them living in trees and imagine wooden ramps or Dalish aerobels. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches, palaces floating among the clouds. Imagine beings who lived forever, for whom magic was as natural as breathing. That is what was lost. Are all Dalish elves like my clan? No. Your clan was unique in having enough interest in human affairs to send you to spy upon the Divine's meeting. As your clans have been separate for so long, they have all changed, adapting to the lands in which they live. Some are no more than bandits, others trade freely with humans, and some have disappeared entirely to the forests. What can you tell me about elves living in human cities? The culture in alienages or among the slaves of Devinter is like any of the impoverished and powerless. They cling to memories of a better past and practice a few rituals to distinguish themselves from humans. Is the magic they teach in the Circle different from the magic I learned with my people? No and yes. Magic is magic, just as water is water, but it can be used in different ways. Dalish magic is more practical, not needing Chantry approval, although they still frown on blood magic. Superstition. Much of it is more subtle. A legacy from when elves were immortal. The legends of elven immortality. Did they use magic to increase their lifespan? No. It was simply part of being elven. The subtle beauty of their magic was the effect, not the cause of their nature. Some spells took years to cast. Echoes would linger for centuries, harmonizing with new magic in an unending symphony. It must have been beautiful. You said that the censure against blood magic was a superstition. I did. It's fortunate Cassandra is not within earshot. Most modern cultures forbid blood magic. Publicly, even Devinda disapproves of it. But as I said, magic is magic. It matters only in how it is used. I'd be interested in learning more about blood magic. I would teach you if I knew it. Unfortunately, using blood magic seems to make it more difficult to enter the Fade. You understand why I never bothered to learn it. A shame, as it is extremely powerful. Provided it remains a tool, not a crutch, nor a passion. We'll talk later. Goodbye. What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest a young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. I treasured my dreams. Being awake out of the Fade became troublesome. Did spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. There was so much I wanted to explore. I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around it. Unless I traveled, 
I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imagination. To find interesting areas, one must be interested. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If our enemies destroy the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the Fade. Well, it's not the worst reason I've heard to go out and enjoy life. I'm glad to hear it. In truth, I have enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the Fade. How so? You train your will to control magic and withstand possession. Your indomitable focus is an enjoyable side benefit. You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. Indomitable focus? Presumably. I have yet to see it dominated. I imagine that the sight would be... fascinating. <laughs> You said you'd traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins? You may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers. The best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire, and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire, and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real? It is the Fade. They are all real. Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The Fade reflects the minds of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. I'm impressed that you could become friends with spirits. Anyone who can dream has the potential. Few ever try. My friends comforted me in grief and shared my joy. Yet, because they exist without form, as we understand it, the Chantry declares that spirits are not truly people. Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her faith? Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? You have an interesting way of looking at the world, Solas. I try. And that isn't quite an answer. I look forward to helping you make new friends. That should be... Well, that isn't quite an answer either. We'll talk later. Goodbye. What do you know about the Fade? A great deal from my wanderings. There are a few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster in an area that has seen many deaths. But your mark allows you to exert some control over the breach. That means it was created deliberately. I'd like to know more about the veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. 
but according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. It sounds like it would be wonderful. And dangerous. But yes, a world where imagination defines reality. Where spirits are as common as trees or grass. Instead, spirits are strange and fearful. And the Fade is a terrifying world touched only by mages and dreamers. I am glad that I'm not alone in seeing the beauty of such a world, along with the obvious peril. I'd like to know more about demons. Your Dalish say the demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon is that wish gone wrong. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them, if not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one, and it matters that you thought to ask. We'll talk later. Goodbye.